And it is now 26 minutes to 10 o'clock. This is Weekend Express. In case you're joining us now, welcome. And it's time for us to talk about emergency services, especially during this festive season. There's going to be a lot of traveling. Maybe some of you are even tra uh, planning to travel today, tomorrow, as we approach Christmas to and fro. So that's what we're going to be talking about. But let me first of all introduce the guests that we have in studio to have that discussion. And to my extreme left, we have Waihiga Muturi, who is a consultant with NAS in hand. Good morning morning and thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. We you. also have Lucy Njuguna, who's the CEO for NAS in Hand. Good morning, Lucy, and thank you, you for joining us. Thank Let's you. start by first of all understanding what exactly is NAS in Hand. Uh, what, what's the organization and what do you do? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, NAS in Hand Emergency Response is a Kenyan solution to some of the issues we grapple with uh, when we look at uh, responding to road emergencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the areas we focused on is at that golden hour. What happens when an accident has happened? Mm. And uh, as our focus is both uh, reactive after the accident has happened and also to some extent uh, preventive. Proactive uh, before it happens. Yes, yes. And uh, so for now, on the reactive bit, we look, we look at uh, the current situation. When an accident happens, um, either as Kenyans we look on and uh, are helpless, want to help, but are helpless, and uh, the accident victim lies there um, in pain. And the question nurse in hand has been asking is, what can we do? As Kenyans. All right. Let me come to you, Ahiga, and yes, maybe just for the benefit of our viewer and for all of us to understand about the golden hour. Yes. Sir. This is the one hour that after an accident could re literally determine whether you live or you die. Yes. We, we couldn't actually necessarily put it as an hour, really. <laughs> let's, let's put that as more metaphoric. Um, but the golden hour will, uh, in, at this point in time, imply those few minutes immediately after the accident, that if there's a response to that situation, you could survive, mm -hmm. either as, as a victim or somebody who's just within the situation of the accident and up somehow were there. Oh. So before the emergency response actually kicks in, where you are actually taken to the hospital, what happens before, in those few seconds between the accident happening and you being at the hospital for treatment? Okay. That's the golden hour. All right. So, Lucy, what is the current situation on our roads? We know that uh, not too long ago, I mean, we've lost over 170, I believe, in the last three weeks mm -hmm. uh, on road accidents, and God forbid, but it's possible that we may lose others between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But what is the situation on the road, especially in regards to emergency services? Um, all the players who are in the emergency response space are all trying the level best. Mm -hmm. Kenya is big and uh, it behoves each one of us to play our role, including the public, because this is the responsibility that clearly lies with the public in terms of um, observing the speed limits, uh, drunken driving, mm -hmm. uh, being careful on overtaking and all that. Mm -hmm. um, however, in the unfortunate situation that an accident happens, then um, the current situation is we wait for the ambulance service right. to get there. Now, uh, in this festive season, we know the roads are chocker blocked. So how fast can the, uh, the ambulance get there? Mm. And, and that again, is where- it also depends on what part of the road you're at. I mean, <laughs> yes. sometimes you're way into the highway exactly. where there's no um, ambulance close by. Yes, mm. and that is what uh, Nursing Hand Emergency Response has focused on. The quickest way to get help to the accident victim at the scene of the accident. And here we're looking at uh, rolling out uh, emergency motorcycles to get the paramedic with medicine to the scene of the accident to support life. Right. Because we know by the time the ambulance comes, that life would have ebb ebbed away mm. uh, through bleeding or uh, handling. Mm -hmm. But when we have a professional getting to the scene of the accident in the shortest time possible, mm -hmm. then there are high chances of saving that, that life. we save that life. Mm -hmm. And also reduce the chances of um, the person being disabled due to handling. Because 
Kenyans of goodwill will want to rush the person as fast as possible to hospital. Mm. But how are they handling that? Are they trained? Are they equipped to know how to handle fractured mm -hmm. uh, uh, victims? But um, with our solution, we'll get the paramedic to that scene of the accident. A motorcycle can be able to um, manage uh, our traffic. Through traffic yes. Yes, 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 and uh, get to the scene of the accident. Now, for the paramedics, um, we, we look at uh, equipping them to start a certain level of treatment at the scene of the accident. Here we are looking at um, controlling of bleeding, uh, stabilizing the fractures, and uh, meanwhile, uh, the ambulance will be alerted to get to the scene as soon as, as, soon as possible. Yes. Well, Higa, maybe just briefly describe to us the importance of a paramedic and the difference between a paramedic a paramedic's handling and that of a well-wisher because majority of the accidents you've seen you'll have well-wishers who literally want to yank people out and sometimes that could literally be what kills them <laughs> yeah well okay forgive me for the lack of jargon <laughs> medical <laughs> jargon so I'll, I'll put it as, as as basic as most of us know it a paramedic is trained trained to respond within those few minutes of of that emergency well wishers i mean we are well wishers we are not trained to handle any situation medically speaking uh maybe unless the few of us who went for uh first aid maybe training, first aid training. and know. even then um, <laughs> there could be a difference between first aid and a paramedic because exactly. here you're dealing with uh, spinal injuries exactly. you're dealing with bleeding there are all sorts of injuries that you could be dealing exactly with. Mm -hmm. so uh, i i would Clearly, I'll put one as very trained to handle the situation, including uh, items like counseling. You know, we never talk about that during the accident, which mm. is also necessary. Mm. Uh, it's the issue of shock. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As a well-wisher, I can't handle that. Uh, all I'm thinking is I need to get you out of that. Mm. And by yanking you out of a car, mm. I might be ruining <laughs> already a life that would have been saved if only professionally handled. Mm. So that, uh, that's layman's. That's, that's the that's, difference that's between paramedics. All right. Lucy, you've talked about motorcycles uh, with paramedics. Um, mm -hmm. Is this something that is already happening? Is it something that you envision to do within a certain time frame? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're looking at uh, launching in January. Mm -hmm. But, um, of course, we've got to look at what is happening now and um, um, see how possible we can do this. But uh, definitely... Generally, we should have the motorcycles on the road. Um, we are benchmarking with the developed world because um, the use of motorcycles is not in the developed world. Mm. So what we're looking at is what is working out there that can work and give us solutions in our Kenyan uh, space. Mm. Yes. All right, and I guess that's contextualized to our current situation, our road network, our oh, yes. traffic situations, yes. all that needs to be put into context because in the, in the more, well, in the first world, for instance, some countries have what they call an emergency lane, mm -hmm. which nobody uses mm -hmm. apart from the ambulance and the police. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, our discipline levels have not reached there quite yet. Uh, so this paramedics, um, how are you sourcing them? How, how are they trained by you? How, how are you getting to them? Uh, we've had um, uh, conversations and uh, partnership with uh, Kenya Medical Training College. Uh -huh. uh, they have um, 65 campuses all over Kenya, so they are the ones who will be handling the training the of training. the paramedics. Okay. We know they, tr uh, they train the nurses, and also a certain level of paramedic is included in their modules, uh -huh. but uh, we just uh, upscale that. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. And Wahiga, is this how do I um, enjoy the service, for example? Is it through subscription or are you doing this, you know, maybe in partnership with government to a point where it is a, a service that's provided to any road user? Actually, so that we are able to launch accordingly, we are, we are hoping that the necessary um, engagements with the government and also the private citizens and the public as a whole um, we would go through. And once that goes through, uh, the few ways would be it's a mobile web and web-based service. It will be mobile and web-based. Uh, mobile because, I mean, how many Kenyans have mobile phones? Right, right but, now, and, and that's, is pretty heavy. Exactly, and that's even yeah. smartphones. But mm. also for the normal Manaiji who has a simple kabambe. Mm. You know, You'd still be able to access. Yes, they'll okay. be still able to access because um, 
without mentioning many, at least the network providers are willing and able to also help us in the same way. Uh, one thing I would also like to thank the international community is that we, because of the United Nations road service collaboration, they've actually accepted most of our conversations, you know, and have opened space for very many other informal uh, uh, informal conversations to, to come forth even from the public and at the same time we also welcome the public to also give us more opinions on how w they think we could also reach to them. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, so Lucy, it's a great idea, sounds very Thank good on you. paper, but Thank then you. there is now the consideration of the vast road network that we have. Mm -hmm. Are you going to cover the whole country? Is it certain black spots? We do know that there are certain places where accidents are more prone than mm -hmm. others. So mm -hmm. how, how is this uh, network going to be? How are you going to set it out? Okay, when we had um, this conversation, we've had various conversations and discussions with um, NTSA. And uh, one of the areas they recommended we focus on is an, on the Northern Corridor. This is the highway that starts from Mombasa to Malaba, which is a distance of 1,710 kilometers. Now, um, NTSA has also um, audited the black spots. So we'll focus first on the black spots and then now expand out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Waihiga, one of the things I think would do justice to our viewers is when setting out on a long journey, mm. despite the fact that you've not yet launched, there are possibly certain things that we need to consciously do. I was just mentioning this off air. When you're leaving for resistance from Nairobi to Mombasa, yes, sir. you'll obviously think, do I have enough fuel? Mm -hmm. uh, where am I likely to stop? In case mm -hmm. of a puncture, do I have a spare wheel? Mm -hmm. But we rarely or seldom think about our safety. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things that we possibly need to think consciously about in case it happens? God forbid, but in case it did, at least we are already a step ahead in terms of we thought about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> the most obvious, <laughs> first and foremost, is Please tell the members of your family that you're going on travel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's necessary. In your expected time of departure, uh, exactly. Uh, I mean, it looks obvious, but uh, considering uh, the metropolitan city that we are now living in, um, we are tending to now stick to ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, well, let me keep my information to myself. Where I'm going is up to myself. But first and foremost, is actually telling your community whoever your community is, that you're actually traveling. Uh, because now, if anything happens, they might be concerned enough to try to reach you. That's one. Two, common sense prevails that we should use safety belts. <laughs> safety belts are not ropes. Unfortunately, within common the car. sense is not very common. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we discover. Uh -huh. Common sense is not very common. Yeah. But using the safety belts is actually for your own uh, safety mm. um, and using them would actually prevent some acts some deaths actually happening within during during the, the accident mm -hmm. um, three i would also say uh, but this is also a personal opinion when you see an accident up ahead or behind you it would be advisable to get off the road mm. of the accident why because some accidents actually happen continuously after <laughs> the accident has already happened. And, and while on that, there's something as a driver that really, really gets to me, and yeah. this is what I call the steering committee. <laughs> there, are, oh, yes. there are people who literally <laughs> slow down, yes. literally stop on the road, yes. and all they're doing is staring. I and know. I'm thinking, if you're not helping, get out of the way or drive on. Yes. So maybe just to address that, that if you're not helping, by all means, just, you know, get off the road. Yes, get off the road and also call the necessary services. I, I, I must admit, um, as you've mentioned, uh, services like St. John and Red Cross are really trying their best to, to actually cover these stations uh, and, and areas of accident. Mm -hmm. But, you see, they can't cover everything and at least they've admitted to that. So, as a citizen, I think it's also advisable to be able to have these numbers on your phone mm. at speed dial, you know, have them so that in case of an accident, even if you won't be helping the victims of the accident, then you're able to call the emergency response services. Mm. And seeing the nurse in hand emergency response will soon be on the road, you shall have our numbers. All right. Mm -hmm. yes. Lucy, if I wanted to subscribe, or how do I become a member? How do I enjoy this, uh, you know, uh, service that uh, Anas in Hand is uh, going to begin or roll out in January? Okay, we are going to have a web and mobile platform that... Like um, an app? Yes, it will be oh, yes. Okay. an app. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody 
will be able to download, to download that. It. And that is why we, we are having um, close discussions and engagements with government. So this can be a free service so that uh, this can be available to anybody and everybody. So as we get closer to our launch, I'm sure we shall be Engage able to... Engage a little bit more. Yes. Okay, but how do you... Because obviously there's a cost effect to it on your end. Yes. Is that going to be fully supported by government or how are you intending to um, um, fund it? Because there are some of those emergency services that are available, mm -hmm. but on subscription and it's a payment that you make towards a subscription, mm -hmm. more like an insurance. Mm -hmm. Is this the kind of model that you're going to have? Yes, we are going to have a model where we spread out the risk. Uh -huh. Yes, so it is more of a um, uh, crowdfunding Crowd sort funding. of a, approach, yes. Uh -huh. Because you see, you can imagine at the scene of the accident, when we have um, the victims lying there and they are all unconscious, it becomes hard to start saving. <laughs> yes, and deciding this one has insurance, this other one doesn't have, so who do you pick, who do you leave? Uh -huh. And our mission is to save life. Uh -huh regardless of whether someone has insurance or not. So there will be, of course, shared risk. So now when you so talk about crowdfunding, how yes. would this operate? Is it, is it more like, this is what we're doing, so support us, uh, willing, sell, you know, anybody who's willing, or do I subscribe and then enjoy the privilege? We will go, it will be multi-pronged. Okay. It will be multi-pronged mm -hmm. because uh, bottom line is we will be looking at uh, sustainability and also be, this being a Kenyan solution. Mm -hmm. And as a Kenyan solution, we as Kenyans have to own it. So it will be multi-pronged. Okay. There are those who will be able to subscribe at a fee. There are those who it will be a free service. There are those who will be looking at also contribute a shilling uh, multiplied goes a long way. Goes a long, long way. Yes, All yes, right, we need to yes. wind up and I'll come mm. to you for closing comments. But mm -hmm. we're here, your closing comments, and maybe just to close with a word of caution on safety and just to be aware of uh, um, the, the, the scenarios that could play out when we're on the road. Um, well, I think the conversation on road safety and, mm. <laughs> and deaths on the road needs also to come to an end uh, because now we are talking more than actually doing the deed. Mm. Um, a nurse in hand emergency response is, is just one of the many ideas. Saving lives should not just be a conversation, mm. should be an action. Should be an action. Even individually from communities mm. uh, and the public at large, saving lives should be an action. All right. Right, right way to wind up. Uh, Lucy, mm. your closing comments? Yes. Um, a nurse in hand emergency response is uh, coming out as a Kenyan solution to a Kenyan problem. And you are, we'll be reaching out to the Kenyans of goodwill mm -hmm. to, support, to support us mm -hmm. as we roll out um, and also take the interest to also play a role in terms of contributing to their safety as well as the safety of the other people. And uh, we know that um, this time next year, we shall be having a different story. At least we would have talk, we'll be talking about um, how have we managed to reduce the... Road uh, carnage. Yes, yes, and the statistics. Mm. Because even saving that one life... Makes a difference. Makes a big difference. Mm. We know families and um, loved ones have been lost, and that has changed many families and affected many lives. So if we can take this as um, personal responsibility, nursing in hand is there to do our bit, we'll contribute to this landscape and we shall have these motorcycles with the paramedics out on the road soon. And um, as soon as that happens, we hope that um, we'll be able to do our bit, mm -hmm. as every other Kenyan does their bit. Mm -hmm. Thank you bit. very much. Lucy Njuguna, who's the CEO of Nurse in Hand Emergency Response. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us this Thank morning. You. And Wahiga Thank Muturi, a consultant with Nurse in Hand Emergency Response. And wish you all the best in your venture. Thank you. certainly Thank it you. is a life-saving venture. Thank and uh, we hope that it rolls out sooner than later. But let's finish off on a note where we also ask you to do your part as a driver, as a pedestrian, as a cyclist, as a motorcyclist, as long as you're on the road, please stay safe.
this is where we wind up weekend express this morning it's now six minutes to ten and from me and the team we say goodbye and wish you a wonderful wonderful day we'll see you tomorrow same time on weekend express the good lord willing but do have yourselves a great day a wonderful weekend and for those of you that might be traveling a merry christmas and a prosperous happy new year